So if NVIDIA's 1080 Ti was known as legendary, then what would we call the antithesis of that card, the GT 1030? Legendarily bad? Potentially. See, the GT 1030 came out in May of 2017, so it's getting old now. When it came out, it launched at 79 USD, which is really freaking low for a graphics card. I mean, the cheapest NVIDIA graphics card that you can buy right now that's brand new is the RTX 3050 at $219. So this was literally less than half the price of that when it came out, meaning that people knew it was low end when it did come out. Although surprisingly, it received really good reviews with some buyers saying, and I quote, the card is really good. It stacked up pretty well against new lower end cards of the time and went blow for blow with mid range and higher end cards from several generations back. Quote, performing on par with the 550, meaning the GTX 550, while consuming 20 watts less, with another buyer stating as cheap as you can get while staying relevant. Fast forward seven years till 2024 and the GT 1030 is pretty hated because now it's been stuffed into every low end Amazon, AliExpress, whatever build that you can buy pretty much anywhere. And that made me curious as to how it would perform because if it's being stuffed in so many freaking computers, then maybe it's got some power behind it. So I thought we'd look into that. Now the GT 1030 only had two gigabytes of VRAM. It was launched with GDDR5, but in 2018, a year after its initial launch, Nvidia released a DDR4 version as well. The DDR4 version of course performs worse than the GDDR5 version. And from here on out, we'll be referring to the GDDR5 version because that's the one that we have in house. Now, while modern PC hardware enthusiasts love to hate on the GT 1030, is it really that bad? Well, I decided to stack it up against some other budget graphics options. That being the iGPUs of both the Ryzen 5 5600G and the Intel i5 12600K. I definitely chose those and then bought them for this video and didn't choose them just because I had them lying around. I just had them lying around. I decided to pit these against each other in several games. Those being Fortnite, F1 2023, and Starfield. Fortnite because it could run on a literal brick if you needed it to, as we'll prove in a second. Starfield because it's pretty demanding and hard to run and F1 2023 because I'm a car nerd and I love racing. Now, before we get into the testing, I do real quick want to talk about the system that we will be testing on. Given that we have two different CPUs and motherboards, we are going to be using different systems, but we're using the same two RAM sticks and the same SSD with new drivers in hopes that we mitigate any differences made by the systems. In Fortnite at 1080p epic settings, the GT 1030 managed an average of 17 FPS, hitting a max of 20, a low of 13, with 1% and 0.1% lows being at 10 and 9 FPS each. The i5 12600K fared significantly worse, averaging 9 FPS. It had a max of 13 FPS, and its min, 1% and 0% lows were all at 0 FPS. This was very choppy and very, 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 very unplayable. Now, the Ryzen 5 5600G performed admirably hitting an average of 18 FPS, beating out the 1030, but maxing out at 18 FPS, bottoming out at 13 FPS with 1% lows of 11 and 8 FPS each. So at 1080p Epic, our winner seems to be the 5600G, but if we turn the settings all the way down to low, where you'd expect to play with the 1030, we see quite a different result. In fact, the 1030 managed to average 169 FPS, which was very smooth and very playable. I underestimated how well this card would do here. It maxed out at 218 FPS and bottomed out at 113. Its 1% lows were at 101 FPS, making this very smooth, and its 0.1% low was at 25 FPS, which I didn't even really notice while playing. In fact, I was blown away at how smooth this gaming experience was, given that we only had two gigs of VRAM. Now the 12600K performed the worst yet again, averaging 89 FPS, maxing out at 107 FPS, and bottoming out at 52 FPS. 1% and 0.1% lows were at 16 and 12 FPS, respectively. Now the 5600G averaged 91 FPS, but maxed out at 105. 45 FPS. It bottomed out at 29 FPS and had 1% and 0.1% lows of 13 and 4 FPS respectively. This was also pretty playable, but it was still pretty choppy with those 1% and 0.1% lows being as low as they were. Moving on to Starfield, the most demanding game that we tested, the 1030 managed to average 13 FPS at 1080p low. It maxed out at 17 FPS and bottomed out at 9 FPS with 1% and 0.1% lows being at 8 and 6 each. Now the i5 refused to launch this game, stating that we did not meet the minimum graphical processing requirements, which is all right, I didn't expect much more. What did surprise me though, was that the Ryzen 5 managed to outgun the 1030 in Starfield. It averaged 19 FPS, maxing out at 22 and bottoming out at nine FPS. It's 1% and 0.1% lows were at two and two FPS each, making this yes, still unplayable, but a little bit closer to playable than the 1030. In F1 2023, we see the inverse with the Ryzen 5 refusing to launch, but the 1030 still beating out the 12600K. In fact, the 1030 averaged 30 FPS, maxing out at 34 and bottoming out at 26. 
It's 1% and 0.1% lows were at 25 and 18 FPS, respectively. The 12600K, on the other hand, averaged out at 22 FPS, maxing out at 24, bottoming out at 19, with 1% and 0.1% lows of 18 and 17 FPS. Well, those were some interesting test results. Not what I was expecting, and from what I can tell, not what you guys were expecting either. What do I mean by that? And why am I wearing a different shirt? Well, as for the shirt, it's a different day, and this is Editing Ryan. And the reason for me being in a different shirt and this being a different day is that I ran a community poll to see what you guys thought would do the best. And 78% of you guys thought that the Ryzen 5 5600G would outperform everything, although that wasn't the case. 13% of you guys thought that the GT 1030 would outperform everything, and only about 9% of you guys thought that the 12600K would outperform both the 5600G and the 1030. To be honest, I was with that 78% that voted on the 5600G because I thought it would do quite a bit better than the 1030, but I was proven wrong and how interesting that is. By the way, if you guys are enjoying today's video or getting any value out of it, then please feel free to like and subscribe. Alongside that, one of my friends is in the hospital right now because he had a back tumor and he's working on recovering right now. If you guys wanna support him, his GoFundMe is down in the description as well. Anyways, here comes the part of the video where I make my recommendation. See, the 1030 is a surprisingly good card, especially given that you can find it for about 40 bucks on eBay all day. Is it gonna keep up with something like a 1650? No shot. The 1650 has got twice the VRAM and is newer. There's no shot. That being said, I feel like that the 1030 is the bare minimum entry level graphics card for most modern gaming. You're not gonna be able to play most AAA titles. It's just not gonna happen, especially given that this is a $40 graphics card. That being said, if you're just trying to play Fortnite, Apex Legends, or get into some basic light gaming, the 1030 is actually a totally acceptable card. Now, would I take the 1030 over something like a 5600G, for example? Well, given that the 5600G is only 20 bucks more expensive than the Ryzen 5 5600, I would actually go with that over the 1030 and then save your 20 bucks for a better graphics card later on down the road. The 1030 is a perfectly acceptable card, but given that the 5600G managed to deliver a playable experience in most of the games that we tested, if you're willing to drop the settings, I think that it would be a better decision to take the 5600G over the 1030. If you're buying a 12600K, chances are you were not buying it for its iGPU, but I just wanted to throw it in the ring because it was comparable to the 5600, and I thought that it might be interesting to just kind of see how it goes up against it. So do I think you should buy the 1030? Probably not, but if you're buying a budget-oriented system that already has a 1030 in it and you're getting it for cheap, I don't see why you wouldn't just use it for the time being. It'll deliver a mostly playable experience in most games, and in the example of my card, it cools passively, so it hardly slurps any juice whatsoever. It's a very efficient card and works perfectly as a display adapter, and in my opinion, if you're not gaming or video editing, this is actually a perfectly competent graphics card. It'll do everything you need it to, and a little bit more. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then check out this video right here, where I put the GTX 1080 Ti up against 2024. Anyways, this has been Ryan. Love you guys. I'll catch you next time. Ryan, out.